What, in here? Yeah. Uh, people just giving me a whole bunch of anime stuff. I've been said it. PSA announcement for anybody that's a Jamal fan. If you bring me anime stuff, I, I give you gloves and anything. You are my first priority. When people bring anime stuff, I know they understand me as a person. <laughs> now they don't just see me as a football player. So when you understand me as a person, you get more attention from me. So that's all. That's cool, so bring me some stuff <laughs> and I give you stuff. All right. Right here, they yeah. gave me some posters. I got uh, them pop animation thingies. It's Naruto in here. I got a uh, Shikamaru from Naruto in there. Somebody gave me a little uh, Pikachu Naruto, like a little thingy. It's so adorable. Like, I love all this stuff, man. Like, these fans be making it so great for me. How did you get into it? What, anime? Yeah. Just being young. I was a nerd growing up. <laughs> If I didn't play football, I wouldn't have friends. <laughs> like, well, if I wasn't good in sports, I wouldn't have friends. Because I was the kid with the big backpack, running the class with his arms behind his back. But you have such a good personality, you would have friends. Well, you first of all, kids are bullies and mean in high school yeah. and little. So luckily, you know, I was good in sports, football and stuff. So they had to just accept me for who I was. Like even my teammates, even my like people, my friends now mm -hmm. in high school, they still bring that up. Like, you remember when you used to run around like Naruto, nerd, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, but you know, look where I'm at now, wingy boy. Naruto your favorite? Nah, he's not my favorite uh, character, but that's like my favorite show though. Mm -hmm. I'm a Gara man. If I could be in an anime, I'd most definitely be an evil villain though. Just cause it's much easier and it's fun. <laughs> How important, Jamal, is it that Dan Campbell really allows guys to be themselves? And I mean, you live out loud with your personality. We see it before every game when you come out on the field. Mm -hmm. That seems like a big, a big thing for Campbell is to let guys be themselves. Yeah, I feel like when you let people be themselves, at the same time, like they still got to get their job done. So, even for me, when I first came to the league, I was more worried about making sure people understood, like. I'm more about my assignments. I know I'm going to get the job done. And then I can still have fun, you know, dancing around, be myself just to get myself motivated. Because I dancing and smiling and joking around, that's just me just having my love for football and just my mood about how I go about football. And, like, if I can't get into it like that, then I feel like I'm not really into it, into the game or my love of the game is being cut in half. But I'm grateful for Dan and just how he just lets us be us. And he pushes us to, you know, for us to show our personalities to the team and become closer and closer to each other. So it's just great. I'm, I appreciate having him and the coaching staff. Is this one of your favorite times of the year when you get the chance to, to interact with all the fans? Uh, I'd rather go inside, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go inside and go to sleep. But at the same time, I understand from a perspective of a fan is, they out here long, most of them stay out here for hours just to get something signed. So I try to do my best. I can't get to everybody, but I try to do my best to try to go down the line and sign as much as I can to, to get everybody as much as I can. Cause I just understand like you out here, I get it. You, uh, you cheering on the fan, well you cheering on the team, but you know, it depends though. Cause if a fan say some stuff like, who are you and <laughs> what's your number and stuff like that, it makes me not want to sign it, you know? Then I'm going to go to the people who actually care and really care about getting the signature. So I pay attention to personalities and I hear everything. They, I don't know why people think they're like, how far is this right here? Six inches? Not even six, huh? A foot? A foot? Yeah. They be right here <laughs> saying, just saying things like I can't hear them. You know what I mean? Like, Jamal, uh, who is that? I don't does he play? You know what I mean? Like I, like, I can't hear them. So I just play stupid when they want something, then I just go to the next person until they find out who I am. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you hear for a different perspective or a different reason, I'm not going to sign it. I don't like, I don't like selfish people, if, if you understand what I'm saying. What's like, the, what's the weirdest thing that they've asked you to sign? The weirdest thing? Mm, I don't get nothing crazy. I'm not a superstar. I don't just get people woo you know I don't get, <laughs> woo sign my you know I, mean? I don't get none of that I just get little kids say sign my forehead or something you know that's basically it uh, uh probably like three <laughs> we've seen the silly side of you quite a bit here but uh, you gave a, a pretty big speech earlier in training camp that obviously they, they caught video of. Mm -hmm. is that a different side that the, the new side of you or is that something that maybe we just don't see as often uh, you just don't see it and really I'm just trying to 
just try to step up more as the leader um, that I am. And when I see something or how I'm feeling, I just want to make sure my teammates understand, you know, how I'm feeling and what we can do better and what type of team that we can be. And it's really just a mindset. And I feel like the more that we talk about it and the more that we keep this uh, level of expectation for ourselves, that everybody else on the team is going to get contagious and then they see, like, we really can do something special here. It's, it's all mental because we're working hard. We're doing everything we can. But it's just the mental work that we got to keep going on, especially when we're tired. Because I feel like that's when the championship teams come out. Everybody's going to be tired. But it's about working on your fundamentals when you're tired and, and beating people with it, with your technique. So we're getting there. And I, I'm proud of this team. We working, we getting there, we getting better and better. So, and then we just gonna keep rising our expectations. And every time we feel like we can't go no more, we just keep reminding ourselves what happened last year, and we don't want that feeling no more. So, we gotta get sick and tired of being sick and tired. So, you have a dedicated room. Well, that's gonna go or maybe a space back to the up where. What this? Yeah. This is going in my man cave. Man. What's that look like? It's just my living room. <laughs> my living room all animated up. I'm talking to other players, everybody just raves about Ben Johnson. Is he as fun and as good and creative as everybody seems to think? Wait, who? Say it again. Ben Johnson. Oh, yeah. Ben Ben? Yeah. No, nah, he's funny. <laughs> he's a funny dude. But yeah, he's great. He's great. He's doing the best he can to make sure he's keeping us motivated. Like, he really be trying to bring juice into the meeting rooms and just want us to just have fun while learning how to play football. and just getting everything down and just like trying to make it all fun and not so serious you know a lot of people get so scared and, and psyching themselves out and they go out there and they do worse you know so it's just all about just having confidence in yourself believe in yourself and just do your best has locked the gates become uh, some of the team motto around this uh nah, i honestly got that from my high school coach like my high school coach was a great motivator a motivated speaker <laughs> And that's the first thing that came to my head, because he always said, lock the gates. He was like, 60 minutes of controlled violence. <laughs> that's just how he said. He said, we're going to lock the gates. 60 minutes of controlled violence. And every time you hear that, it's just funny. But he had all like he had all the speeches, so I just try to channel my little, my inner Ray Lewis, my little coach Crutchfield. That's his name, Tony Crutchfield. And really just try to just help my team get motivated. Let them know, like, we, like I care, you know? Let them know I care, people in this, uh, on this team care, and we just got to all care together and understand like it's a team thing. So when everybody on the team can believe in each other, trust one another, and know that um, the person next to you is going to do their job, we're going to get stuff done. What's your only impression of the offensive line and how special they can be? They can be special. And my job is just make sure I keep them motivated too, especially if they get down. Like We can't move nothing if they ain't moving nothing. So I just make sure they know I got their back. I'm going to love them no matter what. They need anything from me. I got them. You know, if I ever see them down, I'm going to pick them up. And I know they'll do the same thing for me if I was down. So. How do you pick them up? What do you mean? When they're down and then I maybe. With a trolley. I'm going to pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Just lift their head up. Hey, hey, come on, man. Even though they taller than me. Hey, get up. Get up, man. We got this together. Nah, I ain't talking to them like that. But I, I give them their little personal speech. Deck, he good. You know, he, all you do is sometimes you just give them little little peps there. As long as they know somebody's there to encourage them, and like you just want them want the best for them, they gonna give you they all. Do presents work with this offensive line? Do they like that much better? Is it presents? Yep. Probably, but that's a little big homie's job. Penne, he he got on the moolah. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> got time for two more? Is this the year Swift becomes a, a national star? I think he's ready to explode. What that mean? Well, being like an all, an all pro player, Pro Bowl player. Swift. Yeah, he get there, most definitely. You know, he been doing his best and just working hard. He, he's just gonna be swift, you know. So we just gotta keep giving him plays and put him in the best positions and just let him roll. But Swift always gonna be swift. He gonna get there. He always gonna get his recognition. How about the run from Gerard today? Oh, it's nice. It's nice. I heard you. Huh? I heard you running down the field. Oh yeah. I just like to get him juiced up, man. I gotta let him know. I know they be tired too, but. I'm telling you, that encouragement from your teammates, it lifts you up and make you want to do more. So I'm just trying to make sure everybody know I'm just here to help. Even when they do something bad or I feel like somebody either didn't do good on the play, they the first round, I'm going to try to go get them real quick, lift them up, let them know, next play, let's go, next play. No matter what happened the last play, it matters what you're going to do after that. So, What are your one or two early goals for yourself? Mine? Oh, I'm just going to get loose. Just put me in opportunities, I'm going to get loose no matter what it is. 
I'm gonna route run, I'm gonna take some ankles, I'm a bully as usual, but people think they understand what type of football player I am and they don't have no clue what I can do. I literally can take anybody's ankles. I ain't scared of nobody. Route running, running the ball, blocking, I can do it all. And I, don't, I have no problem having confidence in myself because I know what type of player I am and what type of work I put in. I ain't scared of nothing. Thanks, Look at my hair, man. Thanks, guys. Jamal, man. Baby dreads, ugly phase. I don't care. You got anything left on your wish list? On my wish okay. list? Uh, yeah, just keep bringing me some more stuff from my man cave. Appreciate it. I like these little pop thingies, whatever they call the pop animations, but bring them in anime form. If it's not anime, I probably ain't going to take it. Just to let you know. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, you guys have a great one. Well, you're a weekend now. Was it kind of what you expected, or what was were the expectations going in, and, and how has it looked up? Yeah, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect, really. You know, being this being my first NFL camp, but we're a weekend, a little over a weekend now, and it's pretty smooth. I mean, it's just it's just football at the end of the day, so it's what I do, and um, yeah, it's it's going it's going smooth so far. Coach, yeah, talking about how observant you've been, you know, just sitting back, listening, and watching, learning. Yeah. Why is it more important for you not to speak and listen instead of just trying to come in and? Be this rah rah guy when you could be that. Oh seen. yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I, it's, I've never been a believer in those guys, especially when you're young. So, man, I'm just staying quiet and and you know learning from all the older older guys in my room and and soaking all the information up, um, you know before before we get uh, we start playing against other teams. Describe to us what it's like going against Panay every day, just the intensity and the strength he brings. Yeah, no, Panay is good. The whole. The whole O-line is very talented. I mean, the fact that I get to go up against them every day, it's a, it's a blessing, really, just being able to go against guys as talented as them, especially Penne. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm fired up. Tell me, like, your usage as well. You played some inside today. You're yeah. obviously on the edge. Right. It looks like you're going to kind of go up and down that line. Yeah. Probably be on the field quite a bit. Just, yeah. just how you like that aspect of it, how they're using it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a very versatile player, and they're, they're using me in that way, too. They're putting me just about everywhere. And um, so, you know, I know wherever they put me, I'm going to dominate, and I'm going to be the player that I am. One of the things, Aiden, we hear a lot like from the fans, everybody's very excited about you being here, and, and Coach says you're just coming in and waiting to earn the respect. Is that just a mindset that you go in with every day? Can you talk about how you approach it mentally? Right. Yeah, that's that's always been the mindset for me, really, um, in every aspect, high school, college, when I'm young. Um, you know, you got these guys who've been there for a while, and, and I respect that, and, and I want them to respect me. So, you know, you, you earn it out in the practice field, and, you know, your rookie duties and, and what you got to do in there. How does it feel to be a big piece of the defensive front that they're leaning on to get that pressure? And where do you think you guys are as a unit so far? Yeah, I think we had a really good day today. We, we bounced back a lot today, which was good. So, you know, we're just taking this thing day by day, ebbing and flowing. Um, it's kind of how football goes. You're going to have some good days and some bad days. and. You're going to keep flowing, and you know there's always going to be that next day. Dan was asked about an instance so, no, where you got beaten yesterday, and uh -oh. he laughed and said maybe he'll get beat one more time like that. But it's because he says you pick up the things really quickly. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, you know I, I think um, it's, it's having that it's having that mindset. You're going to lose reps, especially at this level. You know you're going to you're not going to win them all. So I'm aware of that, and you know if you do lose a rep, you move on, and uh, you know you get after it the next rep, and that's. That's what I did today, that's what I did yesterday, that's what I do every day. Aiden, why Billy Jean and how much time did you spend practicing? <laughs> um, Billy Jean because Michael Jackson is, everybody loves Mike, you know, who doesn't like Mike? And um, and I actually, I, I found the song just about three days before he asked me to do it, so thank the Lord <laughs> he didn't ask me any earlier than that. I would have been screwed, but um, it's been a, you know, I was, I was versing, I was uh, rehearsing the verses in my head for a couple of days, and um, my, name, my name was called, and I had to step up. How nervous were you in that moment? I wasn't that nervous. I mean, I, I, obviously, you're a little nervous. You got to sing in front of the boys, and um, it's it's a little weird, but um, you just got to embrace it and own it, and just know that everyone's got to do it. You know, every 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 rookie damn near has done it. So glove or no glove? <laughs> what you mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I had some good dance moves. No gloves though. No gloves. <laughs> Aiden, with your, your nose to the grindstone approach kind of fits in well with your room too. Charles is, is that way, the, oh, yeah. both the O'Clara guys are, are that way. Yeah. Um, is, is, there a, is there a personality guy in the room? Is there a guy that, that kind of brings the, the energy and the juice to the, the room while you're staying muted? 
Yeah, Ch Charles. <laughs> well, I'm not mute, but <laughs> no, but, right, right, right. Um, no, but Charles is definitely that quiet assassin, and I'd say the personality is definitely Brockers in the room. I mean, dude's been playing for 11 years now, so he's always there to to just loosen things up, and um, you know, just uh, um, he's such a talented player too. So we all respect him, and we all we all just kind of I look up to him at least. So. Um, you know, I think he's he's one of those guys that definitely um, uh, you know, clear the air in the room a little bit. He's got that godfather. Mentality. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. He's a guy when, when you want to pick somebody's brain, when you want to, you know, just, you know, you see something with an offensive tackle or a pass rusher. Right. Who, who's the guy you're talking to in your position? I think it's it's like guys like Charles, the guys like the Aquaras, um, AB. I mean, a lot of guys like that um, who have been in the league for a few years now, and I'm just coming in and kind of getting the feel of all of all these offensive linemen out here and they're definitely a lot more savvy than they were in college but I think I'm adjusting very quickly and I think I'm really taking a lot of strides every single day. Can you speak about the speed of DeAndre Swift man we see him out here making some crazy moves like just talk about his speed and playing against that in, in person. How, how... Yeah no it's I, I saw him today he looked he looked pretty fast and he was hitting those holes hard so um, I mean it's going to be fun to watch him this season, this season from the sidelines. One of the things we talked about a lot is just the, the pro readiness that he can get you guys and just yeah. the approach the practices and everything. Do you, do you sense that? Do you feel that as you come into this first training camp that, that Michigan pre prepared you for this moment? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, those Michigan schedules are, are no joke now, and Coach Harbaugh is coming from the NFL schedule. So, um, I mean, I, this is pretty similar to, to what I was doing at Michigan. So it's, uh, it's, it's nothing too, uh, you know, out, out of the ordinary. What was it like yesterday from Pat's event? It was good. It, it, it was it was real good. It's been a it's been a minute since we put on pads, so I'm um, still getting used to some things. But man, we came out here today, and I, I think I, I, I had a really good day, and I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling good right now. Did the defense win the team drills? I think so. I think we I think we dominated today. But um, you know, offensive guys will speak otherwise. But no, I think I think definitely it was defense's day today. That's what's something they made a couple nice plays from the inside today. Is there any difference, preference inside versus outside, and your ability to get to the quarterback? Well, you know, I haven't really rushed from the inside until about like. Like the last time I did it was probably in 2019, so it's it was been a, it's been a while for me, and so definitely I've been I've been getting used to it now, and and um, you know definitely I'm feeling a lot better with it. Uh, I, I would say as of now, you know I obviously feel more comfortable on the edge, but um, you know you're, I'm getting used to just playing everywhere and just being a versatile player. There were a couple of times where uh, Charles Harris lined up outside of you. How exciting is that to know that you're going to go in with a guy like him? Oh yeah, Charles is he's so talented, man, and. You know, we had a nice little rush today. It was it was one of those unspoken things where we we're both kind of playing off each other. So I think um, the more that we play with each other, and the more that I play with guys like him and and uh, and Julian and stuff, I think you know just the more success we're going to have. Hayden Aaron's mentor told us that he expects this group for to get to the passer a lot more. What do you think is the key to a dominant pass rush from the defensive line? Yeah, I think you said it right there. It's you got to be able to to get pressure with four, and that's the biggest thing. Be having a uh, dominant defensive line. I mean, you see it. You saw it in the Super Bowl. You know, got guys are able to get pressure um, only rushing with four guys. So I think, I think with this defensive line, we're gonna have the capability to do that. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you so Thank you, much. Yep. Thank you, Good to see you. Uh, best fishing story, actually, yeah. video comes out tonight, if uh -oh. anybody wants to plug it. Look at that. <laughs> plug. Lake Superior, Standard Rock, 55 miles offshore. They call it the loneliest place in the world, but it's this huge, this is lighthouse with this huge rock reef that have giant lake trout, and we went out to it one day and I caught a massive lake trout, pretty epic. How big? How big? 38 inches and 25 pounds. Stay tuned. Do you keep any stuff like that, or is that no? A not those thing? big boys or yeah. big girls, I should say. Uh, we let them go. Like I eat like eater walleye. That's usually what I stick to. Or perch, crappie. Take a picture. Oh yeah, you'll see. <laughs> you know, give you a chance to return some compliments here. You know, Elaine had some obviously very good things to say about you. The coaching staff seems super excited about what what he's bringing mm -hmm. on here too. Um, in this new scheme, attacking a little bit more. What have, what have you seen from from the team this, this game? He's just a very, very, very explosive player. And I think uh, definitely going into year two, the game slowed down for him a little bit, and uh, he's gotten a little stronger, even more uh, twitchy, I should say. 
and uh, I think he's starting to understand his role and I think he can uh, be a really, really good player. And he's always asking me questions. It's incredible. He's always asking me questions. We got a great little relationship, kind of bouncing things off each other, so I'm excited for him. There's obviously a lot of ties on Aiden Hutchinson as well. He's mm -hmm. drafted and everything. For sure. Where from Aiden for his first time? Uh, yeah, he's, he's been great. Uh, I mean, I don't really get to go against him much, but in terms of like off the field and how he handles himself, he's great. I think he gets there 30 minutes early to prepare himself for each practice like a pro. He's in the cold ups all the time, so he's doing everything the right way off the field, and I'm sure it'll translate on the field. I think every practice we hear, you know, coaches say stay after one, stay after one, stay after one. Mm -hmm. You guys are hitting a lot, a lot of people, a lot of bodies on the ground. Um, I like that as linemen, you like some of these physical practices early on. And is there a danger for that? Oh, yeah, it's good. It's definitely needed, right? Like, you really need to do that to get ready and get ready to roll for the season. Obviously, it can wear on you as it's just kind of human nature. It can definitely wear on you as camp can go on, but it's definitely needed. It's good today. You like the practice levels for the physical. Yeah, yeah, it feels good because we can. As an offensive lineman, you kind of like to run the ball and kind of get after them. So we get the opportunity to, where you really don't get that opportunity much in practice during the season, for sure. Frank, why do you think the offense is comparatively speaking to last year at this time? I think we're definitely, I'd say we're definitely ahead of where we were last year. I think uh, Coach Ben and the whole offensive staff did a really good job of uh, getting us to understand the playbook during the spring. And one thing is one thing that I think has really benefited us is we we use a lot of similar terminology, which I think is helping us kind of get a head start. And I think Jared's really comfortable in his showing. On a personal level, with how last year went, what's your perspective on just being back in the game and put the pads on yesterday and really get this thing going on a personal level? Yeah, it feels good, man. Obviously, last year was really, really, really frustrating. Um, it's really hard to explain not being out there. It's it's almost like survivor's guilt. Like your guys are all out there battling, and you're kind of stuck, stuck there especially with a freaking toe, you know? So it was very, very frustrating, but I'm happy to be back. It's been good to be back. I feel normal again. Those conversations of, you know, I can maybe do this or no, the, the pain is too tough. How much was there a back and forth in that? And, and how much did, you know, cooler heads have to prevail throughout all? I think uh, it was more me not being smart, trying to think I could play through it, you know? But co good coaches and good advice helped me figure everything out. In hindsight, Frank, I mean, you didn't want to do it, obviously, but look like playing fine moving well yeah I really had no option at the end of the day you do I guess appreciate the fact that you were shut down by your trainers and coaches to, to get right you know, yeah forward, forward, I mean this year, but really your career for sure definitely getting the surgery is going to benefit my career on the long run but also like I didn't really it wasn't much as I guess an option if you guys might think I don't, I don't think I would have been quite the player out there I couldn't really balance it all did you actually do it in the game or it before first play of the game yeah what else? May yesterday too. I don't know. I just stepped and it popped. I said we spoke with May yesterday too. Just talk about the tools. We saw how physical we can be this year. What tools have you brought up in the tools game this year? What have you seen on him so far? Pene? Yeah. Uh, he's definitely leaned out. Um, I think the game, like like with Aline, that second year, the game definitely slows down for you. And I mean, he's a freak show already. So he's just continuing to be a freak show for sure. And he's a He's a very highly intelligent football player, and it shows because he, he's able to play really fast. This is to, to Decker yesterday. Just, uh, Jared, Jared got put in a really tough situation when he got traded here. And it was unexpected, kind of getting done by your former team, and you got to overcome that, right? So just the way he's hit year two, what, what differences are you seeing offseason Jared got here one to, to move to? Uh, definitely confident, uh, I guess commanding. Right, like he's understanding the playbook and he's knowing what to do and he's going right away. There's not as much hesitation. I think last year he obviously understood the playbook fine, but you know, understanding it and being confident in it is a different thing. I think he's really confident and he's commanding the huddle and really being strong and confident with his checks and everything. And it's been great. He looks really, really comfortable and he's really got a good command of the whole huddle, so it's been good. When the quarterback is, is that way, when there is that confidence coming from him and calling the plays, identifying the checks, the hots, all that, does that confidence for sure the entire roster. oh yeah portrays on everybody when you got a confident quarterback gunslinger back there it kind of really gets everybody going at least in my opinion